It's on a little floaty thing. Okay, that's pretty cool. Obviously, this is very tragic, but pretty cool. <laughs> Hi, this is Cass from Aussie Cass Plays, and welcome to part five of my crime sorority challenge. Now, it's actually Sunday lunchtime. We're picking up uh, at the end of the weekend because I had the girls all do their homework and all do either their term paper or presentation that they had to do. I think the only one who hasn't submitted the term paper they had was Maya, and she's actually doing it now. Now, Addison and Giovanna are talking about how Addison's saying she's going to go visit... Jason and Cassidy and Giovanna's like, oh, you know, trip to the beach. That'd be awesome. And Addison's like, look, I'd love for you to come. Oh, Sakina's just appeared. I'd love for you to come, but I need to talk to Jason and Cassidy and it's going to be a bit awkward. And I think maybe I should just go on my own. And Giovanna, I think, is maybe a tiny bit like hurt by that. And Addison probably would have explained the reason, except Sakina just walked in. And that's awkward. Now, Jason and Cassidy live in Sulani, which is probably my favorite world. And they are over here in this low-key house. If you haven't watched my Criminal Empire challenge, they're very well off because Cassidy's older sister, Madison, worked with a rival gang, the Bears. One of the members of that gang had actually legitimately won the lottery before I set the gang up. It was Lex Moyer, who is now no longer with us. And they had over a million smolians in their household funds. And when Madison and Cassidy, with the assistance of Jason and Addison's family, left the gang, they took all the money. So this is proceeds of crime right here. Addison's arrived in beautiful Sulani and she's giving her brother a hug. And like, hey, bro, how's it been? How's everything going? You have a bit of a chat. And she's basically slowly working up to asking about how his relationship is going with Cassidy. So she's talking about, you know, grades. And then, oh, it was great to see you when you came by the other day. And, you know, I was wondering why you were in Brightchester. And he's basically saying, oh, you know, I was in the neighborhood. And... Maybe dad asked me if I could check up on you, which actually makes sense because, you know, Alex shows up and Addison's all like, hi, dad, and puts on a good face. But I think maybe Alex wanted Jason to, like, report back, whether Jason actually reported back that she was having a cake party or not. I don't think he would have. But she's asking about Cassidy and he's like, I'm so in love with Cassidy. And she's like, oh, that's great. So I'm now going to have her... Who dis? I'm now going to have her try and find Cassidy. I didn't do this. This is actually the game. This is the guy that Madison and Cassidy stole the money from. And when I loaded the lot, he was actually standing over here talking to this person. So he may have seen Jason standing at the front of the house. He knows Jason. He knows Addison. He's been in the same place as both of them before. It's possible he actually followed Addison here. So could be some drama. The dude is violent. He almost killed Nadia once before. Nadia obviously being the sort of foster mum of Giovanna. Now we are going to come up here and get to know. Because, you know, <laughs> we'll get to know little Cassidy. Try and find out more. We'll offer her gratitude. And basically we're trying to... Oh my god, why does the floor keep disappearing? Oh, it's because I haven't knocked on the door yet. Yeah, that'd do it. Come knock on the door. So I'm going to have her come up and have a talk to Cassidy because Jason's gone inside, which is great. Because she wants to ask about the text message. Remember how she got a text message from Cassidy basically saying, look, I'm so in love with you. Now I'm retconning that message slightly. So the message said, I'm so in love with you, baby. You know, hey, you know, get back to me kind of yeah that kind of thing so Addison is gonna be basically like so what's the go oh my god and Madison's just come out Madison can you go for a swim or something like for real maybe she could go jogging it's like this is a private conversation get out of it so this is Madison obviously Madison and Cassidy have both had makeovers since the original challenge they actually were much more similar to Sakina in their coloring but they're in disguise because they're in hiding from the guy who was just standing on the beach 
I want to ask about Jason because if she comes back with a, uh, I am totally in love with him. Come on. She didn't, I thought I cued it already, but she didn't. Oh, she did already. She's so in love with Jason. There's an ask for reassurance. We'll see what she says. But what I'm thinking happened is Jason and Addison have the same surname. Maybe it was an accidental text message. So I think Ca what Cassidy is saying, because that was like, do you feel happy around me? And Cassidy is like, no, I don't know you that well. So the way I'm interpreting that is Cassidy accidentally sent a text to Addison that she meant to send to Jason. And she's now realizing she sent it to the wrong person. I think Cassidy would be super embarrassed by that. So she's like, oh my God, I am so sorry. I don't know what you were thinking. You know, you must have thought I was the absolute worst and that I was cheating on him. And oh my God, like, so she's super embarrassed. And yeah, Addison's going to be like, oh my God, thank you. That is such a relief. I was really worried. Because the thing is, I know that message from Cassidy actually used Addison's name, but it's a, it was a mod. There was no reason I could see why it would happen. And the thing is that Cassidy and Jason actually have Max's relationship. Oh, there's little Madison jogging over there. Oh, that was Shark and he went right past her. Okay. Stuff's got to happen now. I can't. I can't let that go. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add Shark real quick to our family just so I can control him because he he would have to recognize her. He literally walked right past her and yeah, her hair's been dyed, but her face is the same and she knows him and she's like side-eyeing him like, yeah. Now he's also had a bit of a makeover. He's cut all his hair off. Uh, he's had a Solani style makeover. I gave them all Solani makeovers and I think he would definitely want to do something to her. She robbed him of a million simoleons. So I'm going to actually have him declare her his enemy, like right, straight up do it. Shark, get back here. Okay, it's taken a bit of doing, but I've got him back on the lot. Because he disappeared, I'm going to have him, ha I'm going to say he pretended he didn't recognize her. Now, here's the thing about Shark that you won't have known until now. He's actually a mermaid, the, hence the name. He's not a not a great, he's not a good mermaid. Let's put the walls up. He's got mermaid powers. We're actually going to test one of them out. So sharks here in the water and it has dry scales. Oh, it's because he just used a power. I was going to say why he's in the water. So, oh, look at his teeth, guys. I don't think I've never shown you guys this before. He is an evil mermaid, evil mermaid. So he's using his mermaid powers and he's calling Madison over to the water and then he's just waiting. So she doesn't actually know he's a mermaid. He actually kept that really, really secret. Now, in theory, this should actually summon her to him. So it works like call over, but it gives them like a negative moodlet and stuff. Apparently I've literally never used this power because the times I've played with mermaids, they've been good people. All right, I love this new focus camera feature, by the way. If you didn't know with the last patch, you can click on a sim in your relationship panel and go focus camera and it will focus the camera. It's amazing. So I'm hoping the fact that she's in her swimwear means she's actually coming over. Yeah, here she comes. So she's suddenly gone, hey, I feel like going for a swim and decided to go for a swim, despite the fact that she saw a shark on the beach. And it's completely illogical. And she actually intended to go inside and warn Cassidy that she'd seen him. But she... uh you know, has this sudden urge. I mean, it's called Siren's Call. Makes sense that Siren's not particularly known for being nice guys. Now, I'm going to try another power I've never used before, which is the ocean threat one. So she gets in the water. He swims past her, like in his fish boy form. And she suddenly is like, what the heck? She has this scared moodlet, deep sea entity from being pulled under. It lurks in the deep, waiting, patiently resting in the ocean's depths for something to sate its hunger. And it just grabbed Madison's leg. She might want to vacate the water while there are mermaids around. Unfortunately for Madison. So Shark has used his power 
to drown Madison. Grim is here. Speaking of things emerging from the ocean depths. <gasps> it's on a little floaty thing. Okay, that's pretty cool. Obviously, this is very tragic, but pretty cool. <laughs> now, I didn't actually end up making him her enemy, so he's not getting, like, a happy moodlet from her death. Now, these guys don't even know. So Addison is upstairs doing push-ups. And where are Jason and Cassidy? They're over here. So, you know, Madison's gone for a swim and they have no idea what just happened. So she is feeling sad, though. She's suddenly got a, like, really sad feeling in her, but she doesn't really know why. So I'm going to have Addison brighten her day and be like, hey, cheer up. Everything's great. I mean, you've got this sweet house. And, like, everything, Cassidy's like, I just, I, I got this really awful feeling. Like, really, really bad. The dog's like, oh, no. So he knows something's going on. So, yeah, Cassidy's explaining she's got this terrible, terrible feeling. And Addison's like, well, I'm sure everything's fine. Yeah, Madison's gone out swimming and hasn't come home. These guys don't know. And I don't think they'd probably start looking until morning. I mean, where, where did she end up? She was out here somewhere, wasn't she? I'm sure they'll notice come morning, but in the meantime, I'm actually going to take Addison home because the thing is that none of them saw it happen. I was kind of hoping they'd react. I'm not going to lie, but none of them saw it happen. So it would be kind of weird and unrealistic if I had her stick around for no reason. Addison's right, arrive back in Brightchester. I think the weather would be a bit of a rude shock going from beautiful Solani beaches to this place but she's come home she's like i'm just you know gonna talk to herself in the mirror for a bit i thought she could work on her charisma skill and then she's gonna go to bed i've got everyone else getting ready for bed and she's sort of feeling a bit unsettled because her future sister-in-law they're not actually engaged i don't think maybe they are but her future sister-in-law because i plan for jason and cassidy to get married and have lots of babies seemed so unsettled when she left i was thinking about it while i was waiting for the game to load and like moving shark out of our house and at first i thought it'd be like battle stations for the gang because shark has killed madison but the thing is madison never told anyone she'd seen him and then she drowned she just suddenly was like, I'm going to go for a swim. And the thing is that those guys swim around at night all the time. I've played them swimming at night in that house before. So I just don't think they'd realize. I think they would genuinely think that Madison just drowned. Because I was thinking, oh, I'll have to move Jason and Cassidy. They'll have to go into hiding. But no, they don't. They don't know that Shark knows where they are. And Addison doesn't know that Shark followed her there. Shark presumably knows where the sorority is as well. Which isn't actually that big of a surprise because they've set up a sorority on campus and they're trying to big note themselves and he knows the surname and everything. So, yeah, it's a thing. We have a long running family enemy who's stepped up his game again to murder. Anyway, I'm going to play through, I think, one day of university with these guys and get them all to school and everything. So I'm going to get this one to go to bed. And I'll catch up with you in the morning. So I thought with Tara, because she was the first one up and the others are kind of taking showers and stuff, she wants to work on her magic ability, but she doesn't necessarily want the others to know that she's a spellcaster. So I thought, oh, whoops, does she actually have, no, she does not. I thought I'd have her come down here and actually practice in the chapter room with her magical abilities. So we're going to have her practice mischief magic because that is her vibe. Look, I know she doesn't know, but does anyone else find the fact that Sakina is doing a picture of a happy looking octopus a little bit cold? Anyone else find that a little bit cold? Given what just happened, I find that a little bit cold. Not on her part, on behalf of The Sims game. It's like, what are you doing? Oh, by the way, I have a mod because I got sick of the game auto starting new paintings and deleting the old ones. I have a mod where they put completed paintings in their inventory now. It's a Little Miss Sam mod, and I figured it's the best way to get around that glitch because it was deleting cool paintings, and especially in medieval where we're making money off 
selling our paintings. There you go. That is actually really cute. I've literally never seen that painting before. I don't usually do small paintings, but I like it for Sakina because then I can make this like painting collage. I want to fill her whole room with little paintings all the way around, all down here and around here. And the only ones I'm ever planning on selling are the ones we have to sell for her aspiration. She actually still needs to go to a museum. We didn't manage to get to that on the weekend, but you know, what are you going to do? I'll just get you to go get some food. Shana got up and decided a middle of the night drink was in order. And now she's feeling a little drunk, which is just what you want your Sims to be feeling at the start of a new school term. Yeah, exactly. Sakina got to her class half an hour late. Hopefully that doesn't impact her too much. <gasps> Tara is freezing to- hang on. I've got multiple Sims freezing to death. This is not okay. Also, I thought you fixed the camera. They've basically come out of the class hall, like the university hall, and they've been like, oh my god. So they're both putting on jackets. Please don't freeze to death. No, don't. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Let's brighten her day. And Tara, I think, really actually wants to get to be friends with these guys. Now, I should check if Tara and Giovanna also have negative relationships. No, Tara now adores Giovanna. So Addison's getting a phone call from Jason where he's telling her about the fact that they found Madison. Not that it's confusing having Addison and Madison in the same sentence, but yeah, he's ringing to let her know it looks like Madison drowned. Potentially, I guess, with like an autopsy, they might be able to figure out that her leg was grabbed by something, but they don't know that yet. They just know that she's drowned. Now, Humor and Hijinx Festival has started. So we're going to travel to the festival. I might as well take everyone. This may well start a club gathering. So chaos could reign. They could steal everything. But I don't really want to mess with autonomy. So I'm just going to leave it. And we'll see how it goes. Now, if we load into... Is there a museum at Humor and Hijinx? can't remember. If we do, I might quickly try and get Sakina to view some artwork. <laughs> just get that done. It would be cool if I can actually have them steal stuff competently, but I feel like they're going to just grab the nearest chair and fail. And if they do that, anyone that does it and ends up with an embarrassed mood lot, I will have them do some charity work during the week because I feel like that's only fair, you know. Conveniently, it is actually the one with the art gallery, which means that I can have her come in here. So I'll get her to view and then maybe attempt to swipe that. <laughs> I'm putting them all in the pranksters, you guys. I thought that would be appropriate. So Addison needs to also clog drains. So I'm going to actually test this and see if she can clog a drain here. Where are the bathrooms on this lot? Poor little Maya's like, can I join the jokesters? Oh, honey, if you need to pee, go pee. Come over here. And prank them because they have drunk the yellow drink and therefore we do not like them. Oh, they came to me. Oh, Jason's here. He's looking very perky for somebody whose, like, girlfriend's sister just died. Oh, and Ashley's here. I love Ashley so much. She's one of my favorite scenes ever. This is Nadia's wife and the aunt to the girls and Jason. So everybody's here. So let us, I want a mischief, a mischief you. We'll ask your due date and we'll dare you to streak. And where are you? What are you doing? Attempting to swipe. Oh, did that count by the way? No, she's clogged. Did she clog the toilet? Yes, and it didn't count. So it has to be residential. Go Addison, she did that on her own. Good work, honey. I probably should be paying attention here because we need a voodoo doll. Carissa is relishing every brush, brush stroke. Sure, you can like painting. Uh, Carissa obviously is the oldest sibling of Ashley. So there you go. If you get confused by all of the relationships, don't worry about it too much. A lot of it doesn't matter. If you want, there's a family tree in the link. I do keep it up to date. Hopefully we win. What was the last update? We're in the lead by five. I feel like we're probably okay. But let's make fun of Kauri over here. Ah, oh, Carissa's here. I mean, we kind of knew she was. Hey, Auntie Carissa. Why is Carissa not in the pranksters? Seriously? Who is Shana attracted to? Who is Joseph? Really? No. Oh, no, honey. No. I'm going to have to fix your attractiveness settings. 
She is bisexual, so she's attracted to multiple types, but not, I feel like, wrinkly old men. She's, she's probably not into that. I could be wrong. Impersonate mermaids? Oh, that's cold. <laughs> Sing the prankster theme song. Okay, we're back in the lead again. That's great. Come over here and swipe this. I'm not actually watching them. I'm just kind of hoping for the best that we get what we need out of it. Uh, okay, can I get you to come over here and make fun of this person? Because look what they are wearing. There's some nice legs there, but no pants. See, this is what happens when a sim who is in a full body outfit with a hat buys a festival t-shirt. <laughs> Why don't you put some different clothes on, buddy? Why don't I just uh, put you in that? There we go. Aside from the shoes, he's actually reasonably put together and kind of cute. I'm just saying. Ah, the fireworks are going off. Does that mean we're almost done? <gasps> we won! We won! A voodoo doll, fireworks, and 500. That's awesome! That's so cool. That means Addison can bind a voodoo doll. I don't know if we need to be near Shark to bind it to him. If we do, we'll obviously have to see if we can track him down at some point. I might take her to Solani one evening and see if we can bind it to him. Although, would she though? She doesn't actually know. She doesn't... No, it has to be someone on the lot. And she doesn't actually know that he killed... Yeah, I don't know. I, feel, I keep thinking that I want them to go after Shark and then reminding myself they don't actually know that Madison was murdered because no one saw it. I genuinely thought The Sims would react. I'm quite upset that they didn't. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. I'm going to take them home. If you have enjoyed, please like and subscribe. You know the drill. Don't forget to wash your hands and I will catch you next time. Thanks for watching.